Welcome to 3D Filmmaking with Montio. Now I call it 3D Filmmaking rather than animation because a big misconception about my work is that I don't consider myself much of an animator. I know real animators and if you were at my panel last year I went through describing that animation isn't the means of how you want to get done what you saw me do, which is make movies. And that's what it is what you want to be. You want to be a movie maker who uses animation. It's a different way of looking at it, but that's exactly how it has to be approached because animators don't make movies. They make reels or they make, uh, they make demo reels or they work for someone who makes movies. So an animator themselves never get, gets out there and known for uh, very few at least. So, how about a little backstory? So I was trying to make movies several years ago in Flash or whatever program and uh, I have you know, some background in 3D, I've been using it mostly. And three years ago, about a little three, over three years ago, I bought a laptop that with $2,000 I didn't have. But I knew that there was something I could have made with it and I knew that I needed the power to make it. I had previously a laptop to that and it wasn't powerful enough. And there would, there would be three things if I could bullet them about the workflow that I do. I would emphasize speed, then, then power, then accuracy. Bruce Lee would put it speed, uh, uh, speed power, accuracy, but um, speed because you just need to be bloody fast. I go through a million keystrokes constantly, and the reason being, you're dealing with millions and millions of frames, so there's no reason. I see other people work on computers and I just cringe because I, they're just going so damn slow. Um, the recent trend, and you'll notice I'm actually running in Windows 7 here. I hate Windows 7 because, <laughs> not because it's a bad OS, personally, because um, it's an OS, just like the trend of OSs these days, that suit to the organic use of humans. Computers are becoming more organic, and my solution for becoming fast when making these movies is to be more digital. So you'll almost never see me touch the mouse. It's always about running those keystrokes. Anyways, so, three years ago I bought a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I used the crap out of it. Um, the alt key, which is why I use it. I actually used to be very big on Macs, but the one thing about PCs that they have over Macs is that anytime you hit the alt key, it'll underline something that'll drop down a menu. So, like, some shortcuts. Like, in, if you wanted to access brightness and contrast in Photoshop on a Mac, you gotta go, brightness, contrast. Photoshop on a PC, it's Alt-I-A-C. Alt-I brings up the image menu, A brings adjust, and C is contrast. And it's just that much faster. Anyways, three years ago I bought a computer. This is the state it's in now. But I'm very proud of this because you can tell I used it to its maximum point. I squeezed every bit I could out of it. And I have a laptop here now, and I mean... at the airport. And then, um, yeah, I got stopped at the airport. They thought it was a bomb. <laughs> Next slide. So, three years ago I bought this laptop because I knew it had the power and I had the speed. I made a movie called Haloid, which was pretty popular. I, knew, I made it because I knew it would be popular, despite not even being fully familiar with even the Samus Metroid, uh, Samus Master Chief art. That aside though, I made it and the strokes of that came naturally to the ending it had. And, um, well, it, it, that's kind of where I hit it big. Uh, um, a, a very good director at Midway Games named Chip Semeni saw that and was the first to snatch me up, so that was my entrance into, into, the, into working in video games. They said, hey, this, this movie has great moves, I want to see this in our game. So I spent a year at Midway Games and all the while working on an unknown project that never <laughs> saw the light of day because Midway is gone. Oh, with someone. Yeah. I don't believe in waste. There's, some, there's things you learn regardless yeah, yeah. that even if, even if it never seen, I've had movies I've made that I've never shown anyone because I scrapped and felt like they weren't appropriate. But that aside, there's no such thing as waste because I mean, I've I spent years of my life trying to become a dancer. I've spent years of my life trying to open up my own sh shops. It's like, but the lessons you learn from that, like the rhythm I learned when trying to be a, a, pro a professional dancer allowed me to do better timing in my movies. If you know, know my movies, they're very, very strictly timed. Anyways, while I was at Midway Games, uh, between, it's a full year, June 22nd of 2007, I think, I made Dead Fantasy 1 as soon as I got there. And it made somewhat of a splash. Uh, it was shorter, and it was a very nice introduction. And like I said last time, it was a movie I felt I needed to make to get to Dead Fantasy 2, which I then made. And that 
hit really big, especially here in Enemy Boston. If those of you who were at the live premiere last time, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Man. Yeah. I wish I could have done that again last night. Unfortunately, it was not in the cards. I'll describe later why the timing didn't work out properly for me to do a premiere this year. But I'll, I'll let you know that big things are coming and you'll see why. A direct, a, a, an art director at Namco Bandai Games named Huang Nguyen saw Dead Fantasy 2 and decided he wanted to snatch me up. And I made the tough decision to move to Northern California, work, on Nam Namco Bandai, work at Namco Bandai Games as a combat designer, not an animator. My ideas were more important than my skills. There are plenty of better animators than me. I worked on the Afro Samurai game as a combat designer in which afterwards, after the game was all said and done, they liked my, the work I had done so much they wanted to promote me to lead combat designer until Afro 2 was cancelled and we, we decided we were going to work on Splatterhouse. But at the time, I was also vis visiting various, various cons, Dead Fantasy 3, 4, and 5 came out, and I was invited to speak at Comic-Con on a panel. And here's where, here's where things get strange. So I, two, years, two years in, I'm working in two different jobs in two different states. And at Comic-Con, I met a man named Bernie Burns. <laughs> Some of you might know him from Red vs. Blue. He's the one who does, he's the direct art, director and writer of Red vs. Blue and everything else Rooster Teeth does. Oh, so that's the game that Namco's working on right now. Sorry about the disorder. So I am currently working at Rooster Teeth. And this is far, far better than any of the game companies I've had, uh, I've had worked at because Previously, the movies you've seen me make, it was 9 to 5, or worse, especially on Afro Samurai where I would crunch, and then I would rush home, work as hard as I could till the last dime, and just, that's how, that's how I would work. And now at Rooster Teeth, I've literally asked nothing about my commitments other than I deliver. So if those of you who are looking forward to see the new season of Red vs. Blue, season 8 coming out, or if you saw it last week at Comic-Con, uh, PAX East, there's some of my stuff. Think Haloid plus Red vs. Blue. Anyways, one of, the, one of the great perks about joining Red vs. Blue is they follow my ideals on spend, one, spend money when you need to if it can save you time. And what they bought for me as part of the deal for moving me there, I'm now in Austin, Texas, is a motion capture set. And, uh, hold on. What's up? <laughs> oh, I'm at the panel. Hey, you want to say hi? Put you on speakerphone. Oh yeah, better idea. Hold on, hold on, pull it up. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Hey everyone, Nominee here, and I'm at the Dead Fantasy set of Monty Productions. It's great working here. Monty is like a big brother to everyone. He's always making sure that us girls are taken care of. Monty has a lot of ideas, but he needs to stop working so much. He only drinks coffee, and the only time to see the poor thing sleep is when he's passed out over his bed. I tried to reason with him, but he always tells me the world looks very different when you're pushing yourself every second you've got. This is why he needs people like us to look out for him. So let's all wish him good luck and send happy thoughts his way. And who knows? Dead Fantasy 6, 7, and maybe 8 will be here before you know it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be trying my best, too. Look for me in Dead Fantasy, episode 8. Bye-bye. See ya. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's really cool. Yeah, that yeah, was nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the perks, working Red vs. Blue now, they bought this here, motion capture set, I had my eye on. Not the $6,000 one, but a little pricier one. But they follow my ideals, spend money when you need to, and I've hit a point in Dead Fantasy where I feel like there's more I could do given some more tools that I don't have. And I've been trying to save for this, but every, I, every, every dime I get, I put right, into, right back into making movies, so actually I'm way broke. Anyways, <laughs> this laptop I didn't even buy, they bought it for me. That's how cool they are. Anyways, um, didn't he, any of you guys follow me on YouTube? 